Well, of course, uh, we have read and, and I've read in, in economic development uh, uh, books that communities that are successful in the arts mm -hmm. are normally successful in attracting economic development. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's because uh, uh, people want to live in communities that, that, are, that are big yes. in the arts. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a quality of life thing. Mm -hmm. they, it gives them something to do. The people who come to work for the company want to mm -hmm. want to live in a community like that. So not only are we having a good quality of life for our people, but we're building jobs mm -hmm. for the future. You know, Mayor, I actually have a personal example from my own life, right, about what you're talking about. I mentioned that I lived for 10 years in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville is a community that, while bigger in population, is significantly behind in the arts, that they don't have their own symphony, they don't have their own opera, and um, at least they did in the time I left. And they've actually directly seen that influence the level of quality jobs that they've had. They've actually been in bidding for executives and executive level jobs for different companies moving to Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and they lost to other communities because they did not have the arts like we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And so I've definitely seen that occur firsthand and see it have an impact on economic sure. development somewhere. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I love that our arts are accessible mm -hmm. to people. Um, I've lived in a big city where mm -hmm. it was there, but I wasn't a part of it. Here you can be a part, and if, uh, if by chance the ticket price is too, is too high in Paducah, you can say, I'd like to volunteer there. Yep. And you can be right smack down in there volunteering, <laughs> being a part of it, uh, shaking hands of the people and the performers or the artists. And it's, it's an easy place to be a part of a community and make a difference. And mm -hmm. I, I well, admire talking that. Well, uh, I know this is about the National Quill Museum, but it's also about uh, the arts and mm -hmm. tourism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, so you've got the National Quilt Museum, mm -hmm. you've got the Paducah Symphony, mm -hmm. you've got the Market House Theater, you've got uh, Yazer Art, and you've got Lower Town. So those are our art venues. Did, well, there's I left more out? than that. Okay, well, go Where ahead. Where are we? Here we are at the college now. The college, <laughs> and we've got, right. Uh, Clements right. Fine Arts Center and yeah. the wonderful exhibits that happen here in the hall, as well as the, um, and, uh, the, the performing wonderful arts. performers that are yeah. here. That mm -hmm. uh, Gail Robinson Butler, mm -hmm. we were just saying how she manages to book people and always has, even with the summer festival, right before they get big, mm -hmm. just uh, on the cusp. She has a way of putting a winning combination together. Our, uh, we have a group that's been meeting of the cultural um, mm -hmm. organizations in the, in the city, and the, it's really amazing, the variety that goes in here, uh, from Maiden Alley Cinema mm -hmm. uh, to, the, uh, to the museums, the River Discovery Center, the Yeiser Art Center. We have people, we have organizations with all size budgets. Um, and that fit so many of the niches from the, mm -hmm. the fiber, fiber arts group that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was very rich, didn't you think oh, that group? Th that, that's an excellent, excellent group. And uh, its relevance, you, ma you mentioned tourism, Mayor, the relevance that we have all those tools. I've been doing a lot of work at the museum in building a better bridge with organizations that have tours. And uh, I know you guys do a mm -hmm. lot of that work mm -hmm. too. And the ability when a tour is coming down 24 or one of the interstate mm -hmm. highways to explain that if you stop here, you know, we have dozens of different options for basically anyone on your, on your bus, depending on what they like and what they're passionate about, we have different yes. options that they'll enjoy and it's a great place for them to be. And walking distance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Free yeah. parking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, Good restaurants. <laughs> um, obviously, you were... Uh, uh, you applied for the position yes. and there were other other people applying and and you were picked why what what attracted you to Paducah that made you think that Paducah was a, a good place for you to further your career um, a few things actually that's a good question uh, first of all I, I absolutely love the museum it's just a wonderful place I, I've spent as I said I've been on the board so I've spent four years interacting with the people involved with quilting and the people that come to the museum and people just fall in love with it. It's, it's just a magical place uh, art-wise and I knew that that's something I wanted to be a part of. It, I have one of those jobs where anytime I want to take a break I can just go in the gallery and watch people experiencing it and looking at the art and the interaction and, and it's wonderful. 
but more generally about Paducah, you know, this is a great community where there's a lot of different good things going on and it's growing and it's vibrant. And the biggest thing I like here is I love the people. Where, you know, I lived in Dallas before this and there's a distance between people there. There, there are so many people there. People are really in their own little life. People just walk up to you and start talking here like you're an old friend, even though you've never met. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, good. It good. is an well, inspiring culture. Yeah, it absolutely. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, when you say going into the museum and being, you feel the energy. Yeah. And I love it right now that um, this fall there's an exhibit. And I'm gonna get it. It's not. It's not just flat quilts. It's dimensional exhibits. Mm -hmm. um, what's the name of it? Yeah, the Chicago School of Fusing, Fusing exhibit is what you're actually talking about. And that actually goes to a good point, Mary, which is you know a lot of people that don't understand it. it the, there's a good example I give people a lot, which is that the only real difference between what we have and what any other art museum would have really just comes down to mater material. Mm -hmm. And that exhibit's a real good example of what can be done under the guise of fiber art. And that I, I tell people all the time that all art is basically an expression of the soul. And whatever somebody uses it, is largely immaterial. Some people use paint, and some people use sculpting, and some people use sound. Well, in this case, these, these artists choose to use fabric, mm -hmm. and that's really the only difference, and I, I explain that to people a lot who don't get it, but as you know, having been around the museum for a long time, once they come in and see it, they're sold. That's Damn. really it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you hear a lot about, the, a lot of people view quilting as something their grandmother did. Yep. Uh, what would you say to the people with that perception? Obviously, if there's 21 million quilters, mm -hmm. That is not the correct perception. Yeah. But what, would, what would be your comment on that? Yeah, that, that would be a lot of grandmothers. But, <laughs> but yeah, actually quilters are a very broad set group. The average quilter is actually just in their lower 60s. That, that's just the thing that's, and I've, I've just, I know quilters who are 25. I know people who quilt that are 90. Uh, obviously it runs the gamut. But the biggest thing that I tell people is it's very similar to what happens in golf where there's millions of us who try to golf, some are successful, some are not, some choose to not tell anybody how unsuccessful they are. But at the end of the day, we'll sit down once a year and watch the Masters where the best golfers in the world will play. Well, that's what the Quilt Museum is to fiber artists. This is where the professional best quilters in the world display their art, and that's what you're going to see when you come. Mm, that's, a, that's a good analogy. I uh, like that. Well, Mary, um, uh, where do most of our tourists come from that come into Baduca to enjoy our quality of life? Well, once again, that you get into the different types of quilters. The quilters who come here for um, leisure. They're not just quilters. Oh, no, I mean quilters. Uh, sorry. Tourists. Yes, tourists. Yeah. When, they, when they come here for a getaway weekend, you can kind of look, uh, just even from the past weekend, look at our guest book, and you'll see they are um, from the region because they're they're that getaway, just like we would do for a weekend. Chicago is our number one market, mm -hmm. St. Louis, Nashville, and of course all of the little towns that are associated with those and in between uh, are very good markets for us. Quilting is a little bit different because they are all over the world, and I love when we do the Google Analytics on our website, and you go, go behind the scenes and you see it zoom in on a map and you see that there is somebody in South Korea that is coming to Paducah or that is looking at our website or that you can see in South Africa or there's a clump here in Germany that, that look from the German Federation of Quilters or that maybe that French magazine that comes each year f to the quilt show that that issue just came out and all of a sudden you see a lot of little dots there in, in France. So it's a, uh, but that bread and butter is the Chicago, St. Louis, Nashville market. And, and, and would you say Paducah is a notch above as far as attracting tourists for a town our size? I mean, oh obviously we all want to go to Chicago mm -hmm. and St. Louis mm -hmm. and, and New mm -hmm. York, but uh, people actually want to come here. They really do. They, and they, this is a destination. Mm -hmm. I always hear and read, you know, we're hoping this will be a destination. We are a destination. And they're not just people who are coming home to visit family. Uh, they're from everywhere. In the states we don't market to, they're still finding their way through here. Mm -hmm. And we've always been a passing, um, a pass through. Uh, oh gosh, you know, I always give that example. People came through Paducah on the river. They came here on the railroad, mm -hmm. passing through. Mm -hmm. uh, I-24 is just another corridor like that. And they always will pass through. 
they'll eventually stop. Mm -hmm. That signage helps. <laughs> <laughs> get that little. <laughs> yeah, as much um, as we can get. Yes, uh, signage is uh, is big in Kentucky. Um, we're trying with our signage. We're mm -hmm. trying so hard. Oh, I know we are. And we're going to um, keep trying. Keep uh, trying. And I do uh, appreciate the green of the of the interstates without a lot of billboards. But boy, it's hard to get your message out sometimes. <laughs> right. Frank, yes. uh, what do you want to say, uh, wrapping up here, about uh, why people should come to the Quilt Museum? Uh, just give them a pitch. Sure. Well, the biggest thing, like I said at the beginning, you're going to see some of the finest art period that you're going to see anywhere in the world, just right here in Paducah. I mentioned when we started that over 95% of the people who visit our museum are coming in from other areas, which is great for tourism, but everyone in Paducah should enjoy the art museum too. And I'll tell them the same thing that I tell people all the time who just, whether they've lived here a year or 30 years and they've never thought about it, that we're so sure that you'll be blown away by how nice it is that if you come in and you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. And to give you an idea, I've been saying that to people since I got here, no one's asked for their money back. So I'm sure that they'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, it's good, and uh, uh, today we have had uh, Frank Bennett, our, our new director, CEO of the National Quilt Museum, uh, Mary Hammond with the Visitors and in, in Convention Board. Um, we are going to have soon uh, uh, the dr uh, director of our symphony, and so we're, we're, we're concentrating on the arts and to let people know that the arts is definitely a great quality of life for Paducah. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little visit with Mary and Frank, and I hope you'll come down to the National Club Museum, enjoy it, and we will see you next time. Thank you.